Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Making Leadership Work on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host today, Carol Mon Lee. Our show is called The Millennial Take on Leadership, and we're going to talk about a returning millennial's observations on leadership in the real estate marketplace, how millennials look at leadership in a fresh way with my guest, William Elliott. If you want to ask a question or make a comment, you can tweet us at ThinkTechHI or call us at 374-2014. Born and raised in Hawaii, Will Elliott recently returned from Portland, where he started his real estate career managing commercial property. Welcome, Will. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> so nice to meet, to be with you today. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, so you just returned from 10 years in Portland, is that right? Yes, and then uh, the previous four years of that uh, spent in college at Linfield. Okay, so yeah. what year did you graduate from college? 2008. Great, so you are um, hardcore millennial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your years in Portland and how you yeah. chose your career in real estate. And yeah. was that part of your plan when you moved there? Yeah, great question. So um, my father owns a small family business here in Hawaii for the last 40 years in the swimming pool maintenance industry. Um, so growing up, we spent you know, just about every summer and free moment helping him. Um, I'm one of six kids, so there's there's a lot of help with that. And uh, going to college on the mainland, um, there was a couple things there. I wanted to play basketball, extend my career from high school, and then uh, get a good education. Um, growing up on the islands, is, there's a lot of distractions going through high school, so I felt like the mainland would be the best opportunity for that. And uh, going through school, I always had the idea that I would take over my dad's business um, Come back but, home, yep. take over your dad's business. Exactly, but uh, after being gone for a while and you know realizing there's more out there, um, I had a, a deep curiosity to figure out like another potential career path. And um, his brother and his wife uh, owns a commercial real estate company. Currently. Your uncle? Uh -huh. Yes, my uncle uh, in Portland. And so um, we were able to to connect. You know, they pick us up from the airport, take us to school, and that sort of thing. And you know, give us a home cooked meal every once in a while, um, and just being around them, I, you know, they're in the commercial real estate industry, and um, you know, they're they're great people. So I wanted to, uh, you know, see see learn what, and yeah, okay. you know, just kind of follow in their footsteps. So that led me down the road of getting into commercial real estate uh, as an intern in 2008 in June. So where was what was your major at uh, in college? Business. Yeah, I see. You Perfect. Be some business. Yeah. Background for that. Okay. Yeah. So I felt like that that uh, major would give me you know a lot of leverage to to pursue multiple different career opportunities. Mm -hmm. so, so you interned in real estate in mm -hmm. 2008, and yep. then you stayed there for 10 years. I did. Working in the field. Yeah. So uh, I. For your uncle. For my uncle. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they they built the company from from ground up in uh, 1981. And uh, they currently now have over 40 employees. They manage about five million square feet of real estate, and you know they're they're per very prominent in the Portland marketplace. What's, what's the name of your uncle's company? Uh, N A I Elliot. I see. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh, Elliot. Yes. Okay, the family name. Yeah. So, this show our theme is leadership, and mm -hmm. uh, mostly my guests have been mature uh, professionals who've been in the field for many years and have lots of different experiences. And I thought it would be fun to talk with you yeah. as a up-and-coming leader and a millennial who's had mainland experience and is coming back here to, you know, uh, actually live your the rest of your career. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, tell us about experiences in Portland then, and how you met, were mentored, uh, how you observed leadership there, what you took mm -hmm. away from that. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, I started a week after graduation, so basically enough time to move all my belongings from McMinnville, Oregon to Portland. And uh, you know, that was amazing um, because it, you know, after watching a lot of you know, movies about Wall Street and the financial markets and you know, just being excited about what's possible you know, with uh, commercial real estate having no income cap. There's definitely a floor, <laughs> but uh, you know, finally getting access to that um, was amazing. Maybe we should explain to our audience, because yeah. actually I don't even understand. When you say no income cap, is that because you're working on commission? Right. And so therefore, the sky's the limit when mm -hmm. you're in real estate. Okay. Yeah. As a, and now the floor, you start out with a base salary, a minimum, minimum uh, wage? As a broker, no. Nothing. You're, you're you know, cold turkey, oh. you know, straight from the ground up. So did you, you only get, get your license already? I did, yeah. Point? So I was... Uh, 
doing internship for several months, and uh, at that same time, um, I was studying to get my real estate license. So the, a big turn of events happened in the fall when the, the financial markets crashed. 2008. Yeah, right. it was really tough. So I got in at the peak <laughs> and then just rode, rode the landslide all the way down. down. Yeah. So that, that put a, uh, a pivot on, on my career pursuit. So I switched over to property management. I was working in the brokerage department. Um, and then you know, that was a lot more stable of, a, of an occupation. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it taught me a lot of basics on how properties are run, how they're managed, um, how you interact with businesses, especially in the downturn. You know, it wasn't an easy time for a lot of folks. So, right. Well, let's talk about then what kind of um, uh, role models were there for you? Yeah, so you know, internally it was uh, you know, my auntie and uncle. And then you know some other staff that you know I really resonated with. Mm -hmm. um, Particularly, what kind of um, skills did they, or um, style did they, uh, ob did you observe that you thought would be something you wanted to em emulate or? Yeah, definitely. You know, they're they're very warm and welcoming people, and so that was a that was a, a good um, you know environment to to really learn and grow from. Um, you know, they they really care about their staff and their people, so. You know that that really resonated. You know, it really uh, taught me that you know not everything is cutthroat. You know, especially in our industry, which is very competitive. Um, so that taught me a lot. And then their office design and layout. You know, in addition to that, they put a lot of care into you know developing their space to to foster more conversations and creativity and collaboration. So how would you how describe that for yeah, us? Yeah. So it's uh, there was no private offices. Um, not even the your uncle and his. They, they work from home. Ah. Yeah. So that, that just was their their style. Uh -huh. uh, that seemed to be more efficient for them, which is another leadership you know trait you have to understand is how can you be most efficient and then put yourself in that environment. Um, but the partitions, like if you would sit down, you could see every the top of everyone's head. So mm -hmm. line of sight was very critical, and there was a lot of glass and that sort of thing. So you know you didn't feel isolated in a cube in the back corner of an office. Uh, there was a sense of connectivity. Um, you could hear overhear conversations. So for me, up and coming in the industry, hearing property managers talk to, you know, tenants and landlords, it helped to coach me up on, you know, how, how to practicing yeah. how to talk and yeah. how to deal with questions. Absolutely, you know, difficult and, people. Yeah, and during difficult times. Uh, of course. You know, during so the there were a lot of businesses that were failing, a lot of landlords that were, you know, stretching for dollars to make their properties work financially. Otherwise, the lenders would take them back, and you know it was our job to make sure everything you know stayed as stable as possible. So, you know, kind of a hostile environment um, in a sense of you know there's there's a lot of you know decisions and money on the line. Mm -hmm. So just having to to provide a, a good level of customer service and being proactive. So was there a lot of competitiveness among the other? Um Employees like you internally, yeah. Uh, you know, not really. Yeah, because and of the market. It yeah, and, and that's the, the the culture that was fostered. Mm -hmm. You know, from from you know the the moment I stepped in, mm -hmm. and you know even before that. So. How did they uh, uh, foster that culture by not being making it a cutthroat competitive? Yeah, so in I a mean, difficult market. It was just a collaborative environment. You know, staff meetings. Yeah, we had uh, staff meetings. We management would, by walking around. We would make fun of each other. There was a keg in the office. A keg. <laughs> Kegerator. Yeah, this is a Portland. A kegerator. Like Portland's very big on the beer scene. I yeah. see. Uh, we had a shuffleboard. We had a dartboard. We had free coffee. We had a full kitchen. I mean, it was it was almost an extension of our you know your home, mm -hmm. um, and not quite a place where you would go out and hang out with friends, but you could still you know merge those two types. So you could of relax comfortably. Yeah. You know, we had uh, in the summer times we would have barbecues every week, mm -hmm. um, and it, you know people would bring their own food, and you know it would just kind of create this more of a communal atmosphere. And yet, they were still able to create a competitive environment where you wanted to achieve and, you know, do more. Yeah. How did they do that? Yeah. So, um, you know, they they didn't really uh, discourage growth. You know, the ideas can be brought up. You know, the the ladder of, of leadership, which I think is a, a very key point because a lot of times, if you're on the ground in the trenches doing the day to day work, you see what's going actually happening. Versus reading a lot of reports and you know just distancing yourself from 
uh, current events. Did they believe in a lot of meetings? Uh, yes and no. I mean, there, there was a lot of collaboration, but the evolution of meetings over you know my tenure there, um, you know, it wasn't consistent every year. But they they continually tried to improve you know the way they interact with uh, you know the staff and you know the ownership you know of the clients we have. So tell us a little bit about Portland in those days. You you we had talked earlier that it was a very exciting place, right? In the last ten years, you've seen yeah. it grown, going from that bottom yeah. up to where it yeah, is now. Yeah, Portland is one of the fastest growing cities on the West Coast, um, and it's incredible because as a real estate professional, especially during the recession, you know we would call on national tenants and uh, bigger brands that were not um, present in Portland, and the response we would get was like. Where's Portland? Is it <laughs> north of San Francisco? Kind Portland, of near Maine. Seattle? Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> it was it was discouraging because you know Portland is on a map. Like, you know, <laughs> you can find it, you can Google How many, it. What's the population in Portland? Um it, it's north of two million. Oh. Yeah. It's much bigger than the state of Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot more land. Yes. Yeah, so it's it could be a lot more spread out. Yeah. However, the concentration of the population of Oregon is in Portland. I see. Yeah, and that, that actually stems into Vancouver, Washington. Mm -hmm. So how they draw the Portland metro map, you know, includes, you know, a wide area. And did uh, you specialize in particular types of properties? Uh, so I did office, retail, industrial, land transactions, apartments. Um, Everything. Uh, manage industrial parks, manage creative office buildings, urban redevelopment, uh, suburban, uh, tertiary markets. So I got a wide variety of exposure. Managed about 2 million square feet, and with that, over my time, was about 200 different tenants. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, with the revolving door of you know vacancies and new new tenants. So, so did you find, uh, did you see the population grow tremendously in that Absolutely, tenure? yeah. Uh, from what to what? Um, I don't have the numbers, okay. but uh, it's it, it was an incredible um, transformation. Uh, Portland became like this place where young millennials would go. Um, there was a show called Portlandia, and the and the uh, the tagline is "This is where young people go to retire." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know the cost of living was a lot uh, is the cheapest you know major city on the West Coast. Um, you know the lifestyle lent itself to a lot of outdoor activities, being one hour away from Mount Hood all the skiing, snowboarding, camping, that sort of thing. And then the coast, which was another hour away, um, which has all those activities. So um, just seeing the influx of, of people, you know, California, Seattle, you know, coming across from the East Coast where, you know, the lifestyle was a lot more expensive. There was limited space. Um, there was just new opportunities in Portland. So uh, very exciting times. And sure. then 10 years there. Mm -hmm. Excited to come home. Very, very excited. Glad to be back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, before we go to break, I want to point out that the picture in the background, mm -hmm. our background today, is a beautiful picture of Waikiki. And, yeah. and who took that picture? Oh, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my hobbies. I love taking photos and was that uh, from a providing a different perspective on what we are all familiar with. Right. So. Okay. Well, yeah. on that note, we're going to take a short break. We'll come back right. and we'll talk more about. Um, the leadership style of this millennial, and we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review, coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii, right here in the center of the Pacific Ocean. Asian Review is the oldest of the 35 or so shows um, uh, broadcast by Think Tech Hawaii. We've been in production since 2009. Our goal is to provide you, the viewer, with information, breaking information about events in Asia. Asia being anything from Hawaii west to Pakistan, from the Russian uh, Far East, south to Australia and New Zealand. We hope to see you every Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, your host on Pacific Partnerships in Education here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every other week, Tuesdays at 3 p.m., we have guests on and talk about the fascinating, interesting, and unique partnerships in education that occur across the Pacific Islands with Hawaii, Micronesia, the Marshall Islands, Palau, Guam. All these places have really rich local education programs going on, and the exchange among and between these programs is a wealth of great information, 
helping the islands all learn uh, how to survive and thrive in our ever-changing world. I hope you'll join us on Pacific Partnerships in Education. Welcome back. This is Kara Mon Lee on education, no, on making leadership work with my guest, Will Elliott. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. So, Will, we've been talking about your first um, 10 years after college when mm -hmm. you were in or Oregon, Portland, Oregon, and learning mm -hmm. the commercial real estate business and mm -hmm. some of the uh, styles you were exposed to as a um, young person with uh, leaders, leadership um, from your own family, actually. Yeah. 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 So then you moved back to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. How long have you been back? Since October of 2017. Okay, and what yeah. are you doing now? Um, continuing to work at Cushman Whitefield Cheney Brooks. and Which uh, is a? A com local commercial real estate company with uh, a, an affiliation with one of the largest real estate brands in the world. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we have a slide of uh, an image of two images of that. Let's see. Yeah, now yeah. What, what is this? Building? So this is our office, uh, 1440 Kapiolani, um, right across the street from Ala Moana. And on the bottom right, you can see the, uh, the brand new Walgreens. And behind it is Sam's Club and Walmart. Right, and what floors do you occupy? We're on the 10th floor. Uh -huh. uh, we occupy uh, about 40% of our, our, that floor, and we're, we're hoping to expand to, to cover the, the remaining Okay. Ten percent on the one side of the building. Great, so. and I think we have one more slide that um, includes a picture of you. And yeah. where is this? This is in New York. Can uh, we describe the picture to our listeners? Who? Yes, yeah. absolutely. So uh, we belong to a uh, an organization called ICSC, the International Council of Shopping Centers, which is the world's largest retail trade organization. Uh, periodically, they have trade shows uh, throughout the country and the world. Uh, this was taken in New York last December. Uh, it's, it's and you're a, standing in front of the booth, huh? Yeah, the so, Cushman Wakeman <laughs> booth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're standing. In, I'm standing in front of the booth, and this is where brokers and tenants and landlords come in from all parts of the world. Um, being in New York, there was a lot of Europe influence there. Uh, which was exciting, right. and so, yeah. Okay, well great, so, so compare for me now the difference between the Portland market and Honolulu. Absolutely, so Hawaii has traditionally been about 10 to 15 years behind, uh, sometimes five years behind West Coast trends. Trends. Yes, so coffee, beer, food, um, that sort of thing. Now we do have a strong culture of what we have existing, but you know, when Ikea's not here, or Trader Joe's isn't here, uh, or we work, or a lot of brands that you know are, are prominent in the continental U.S. Um, it just takes time for a lot of those businesses and, and trends to get to Hawaii. So. And how does that affect the real estate market then? Yeah. So uh, there's been a lot of studies done on how you know the urban revitalization has impacted in a positive way uh, the values of real estate, um, how customers interact with businesses. Uh, Portland's a, a very uh, you know, small business owner market, so there's not a lot of large brands there. So it, it actually fosters a lot of creativity, a lot of growth uh, in, in the small business so sector. So not a lot of big box retailers. There is, but it's on the outlying parts I of see. the city. So in the urban core, you have, you know, most of it's ninety, like about ninety percent, about mom and pop shops. That's amazing, but yeah. not Hawaii. No, so not Hawaii's different. So we're a, we're a world market. We're a tourist destination, and uh, the real estate market here is you know fairly expensive compared to the rest of the country, and so you know a lot of times mom and pops don't have enough uh, capital in the bank to to really you know afford those type of rents and you know attract you know the marketing and the sales and that sort of thing. So that's where you see a lot of influx of global brands, national right. brands, that sort of thing. And are you specializing in a particular market? Yeah, so I'm really excited about the up and coming Kaka'ako Ward mixed use uh, redevelopment areas. Um, yeah, that's something I got very familiar with living in the Pearl District in Portland. So it's, it's one of the best neighborhoods and uh, urban growth um, models you know, uh, across the country. And so just being very used to that lifestyle, that's, that's what I want to help to facilitate here in Hawaii um, and even bring in some, some influential brands from the Portland market to Hawaii because I think the way the, uh, the progression of the consumer is going, mm -hmm. it, it, there's going to be a lot of resonance there. So describe on a, briefly on a day-to-day -day basis what kind of, how are you reaching out into these markets to bring them to Hawaii. Yeah, so so the first part is to really understand the Hawaii market, you know, and when what's driving it. 
Um, and then secondly, identifying opportunities you know, with space or gaps in, in services or product offerings. Um, Is there something you can tell us now that you see a, a gap or a space that could be filled? By <laughs> you know, uh, I got used to a lot of breweries in Portland, and uh -huh. I, I see a lot of breweries starting to, to come up um, here in Honolulu, so, and even across the island chain. Um, Portland's got like uh, either the first or second, they're either one or two with San Diego and the number of breweries per capita. Now, yeah. only a brewery, <laughs> I don't drink, it's for <laughs> beer? Yes, beer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so a lot, a lot of times what you'll see is um, brewers that have just the focus on beer and then they sometimes bring in a uh, food component and that's more of a brew pub. Uh, I and, see. And so like there's this evolution of that happening in Portland for some time. Um, that's happening here, you know, there's Aloha beer, Waikiki right. beer, and Honolulu beer, uh, starting at Kona, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So, so anything else, anything else that, that our marketplace could be, could use more of? Um, I can't tell you all my secrets. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell me how you work with your leadership then at uh, Cushman Wakefield and... Yeah, no, yeah. it's, uh, it's very welcoming, open Is it environment. similar to what you were used to in Cal in, in Oregon? It is and it isn't. You know, um, having a family connection as your employer, that, that can be a little tricky sometimes. Um, how big know, is Cushman Wakeman? Cushman, Cushman Wakefield. Wakefield. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, s offices all over the world. I see. Yeah. And so, how about here in Honolulu? Uh, there's, we have our main office that we saw earlier, and then we have an office on Kauai and Maui. And okay. we're hoping to expand to the Big Island pretty soon. Okay. So. And so where are you now? You just came in. Yeah. Are you on the bottom of the totem pole? Or uh, <laughs> how do you... <laughs> yeah, that's that's an interesting take. Um, you know, I don't really know if it, it goes by totem pole. Uh -huh. uh, here in the office, it's pretty collaborative. You uh -huh. know, they're, the accessibility to the leadership is, is right there. Um, right. Steve and Joe are within a phone call, text message, email. My old friend away. Joe Haas. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, being the, the veterans that they are, they offer a lot of insight, um, mm -hmm. wisdom, um, you know, areas to, you know, really focus on and really help to, to generate some more leads through introductions and that sort of thing. So, do you do a lot of training, in-house training, uh, meetings? Uh, not, not too much, mm -hmm. no. Um, we've got a pretty competent staff and uh, really confident with the skill set that we have. So. Uh, you know, having, you know, a good marketing person, you know, a good transaction, you know, person, and uh, it, it's a collaborative environment. So we're not bumping up against each other for, you know, competing against each other for business. Um, it fosters more of, of like a, a way we can do all do business together. Right. So And we're in a pretty good uh, thriving market right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unemployment's really low. You know, tourism's continuing to increase. Um, well, what about social issues like homelessness? Of course, we all live with that every day. Yeah, no, that's a tough one. I mean, it, it, it plagues a lot of major cities, and uh, some cities handle it better than others. And you know, I think there's an opportunity to learn from from other markets on how to you know deal with that. Is that something that you in the business, um, you and your colleagues address on a regular basis? Um, some not structured way that you not really no I mean it, it's an issue that uh, that we talk about um, but the solutions are complex you know to really understand something that can really you know help move you know move the, the issue forward in terms right. of progress so well I know you yeah. actually get involved in some community work right yeah yeah tell us a little bit about the Kukui Learning Center yeah so a uh, good family friend of ours Crichton Uwale uh, started the Kukui Learning Center some years ago and uh, they where is that it's uh, it's actually a, a set of courses that are implemented in the public school system starting in Hawaii Kai um, they've got eight schools right now um, they teach so creative writing and public speaking and leadership skills from the elementary school all the way up to uh, 12th grade so it's a course, or is it? Uh, it's tutorship. It's mentorship. I it's see. Um, you know, uh, SAT. I see. Uh, prep so you have courses. an office space. Uh, is there an office people? Uh, or you yeah. said it, it's in eight schools. So I'm trying. Yeah. To so so they, they implement. Yeah, they have staff and teachers, and they implement these programs um, into the schools. I right. See. So so Creighton's a. Uh, a long lifelong learner, and he's actually taught at Hahayoni and um, had a pretty good career in education. So, the way he's he's taken a look at a lot of you know what's happening and you know 
the education system. He's found some really good uh, ways to improve how you can teach and how students can learn. Yeah. And exactly what are you doing as your as a volunteer? Yeah, so uh, coming from Portland, you know, one of the big drivers of the economic growth there was the technology scene, right? So as I look at Hawaii and uh, the amount of talent we have here, um, it doesn't make sense why we can't have more of a technology presence. Mm -hmm. And so the best way to do that is through education. Um, and Creighton's got, got the perfect uh, platform to be able to implement, you know, how to do coding and how to do, you know, video editing and all sorts of things starting at a young age, right? So we can home grow our own talent. We don't have to, you know, continue to outsource or watch our um, loved ones leave to go to college for right. better um, right. opportunities. opportunities, right? So, so creating that environment here in Hawaii, uh, starting at a young age and teaching our, our kids to, um, to be proficient at, at at those items. And so what yeah. are you doing as a volunteer? Yeah, so I'm, I'm connecting with uh, a lot of my contacts back in Portland. Nice. Um, one of my friends, Paul Brown, is a vice president at Cinder Staffing, which has been the, the fastest growing business in, in the state of Portland, or the city of Portland, excuse me. And um, they do a lot of technical uh, work, software, hardware development, testing. Um, they've got an amazing list of clients. And uh, you know, being able to outsource some work to Hawaii is becoming more of a real conversation. Great. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Well, we only have a little bit of time left, so uh, I've been talking to Will Elliott. And Will, I'm going to give you a few seconds to look into camera four and give our viewers a last-minute remark. Yeah. So uh, first of all, thank you for letting me on the show, and uh, I'm just really excited to be back home in Hawaii, and you know, look forward to collaborating with a lot of business leaders and entrepreneurs. Uh, really push forward um, the progress that Hawaii has already made and make us you know, more of a technology and uh, urban lifestyle growth uh, example to show the world. So Great. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Will. All right. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, and that brings us to the end of our show today. And we've enjoyed bringing it to you. And I'm your host, Carol Monley. We've been talking about a millennial take on leadership in the real estate market with Will Elliott. If you want to see this show again, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii, where there will be a link to this show and many more just like this one. As you may know, ThinkTech is a 501c3 Hawaii nonprofit digital media company dedicated to raising public awareness about news, issues, and events that affect our lives together in these islands. You can make a contribution on our website homepage, thinktechhawaii.com. Thanks so much to our Intrepid Studio staff and to all the people who watch, care, and contribute to our ThinkTech productions. We'll see you next time. Aloha.